Growing up, 1922 to 25, grandson finds grandpa's notebook, handwritten by Frank Bart, found by grandson Calvin Hamill, who was born two months after Frank died, 1993. Then, 23 years later, while visiting Baba Ann, he found a notepad tucked in with odd books in the farmhouse in the yellow room four days before Baba died. Growing up with Frank Bart, 1922 to 1929 memories, this is a story translated from the pencil-written notes and still and will be read by Calvin and Jesse, grandsons, and daughter, Connie Bart Hamill. The photos were found very recently in an envelope by Marcy Bart and passed on to me. So we've combined both, and here's the story. Recalling life from 1922 to 29 on the Kello farm, four miles north of where we live now. Being about five to six years old, I remember the thrashing outfit with Joe and Bob Smith and Pat MacArthur, plus Dad and a few more guys I've forgotten. Grandpa used to help now and then. I remember Joe Smith had a small Ford Sun tractor on steel. When they finished thrashing, the tractor couldn't move the machine out of its setting. You had to bring the thrashing machine first, digging the higher wheels into the ground. It also held the machine in place when the long driver belt was tightened so that it wouldn't slip while the belt was turning the machine. But when finished, the tractor couldn't pull it out after sitting. Dad had a big team mix. They braced the machine, and when it rattled, the horses decided to take off with the machine and ended in the slough about two feet of mud. So out came the chains, and more horses were hooked up alongside the others, into the slough about 50 feet or more. They were afraid to turn the machine in case it upset, so they drew it to the other side. I can still remember the excitement. Also remember Vasilko, they used to call him, trapping muskrats. Mother or dad would go with him on the coulee marshes, day after day in the spring. Also, Charlie came home with what seemed like a big violin. It was a violin guitar, but it seemed huge. Mother and he used to ring out some wonderful tunes when Grandpa would come over with his violin. Grandpa Joe would come over two or three times in the winter, spend a few days, and hitchhike home, or Dad would drive with him as far as Rossburn. Grandpa was a great hitchhiker, always on foot, visiting homes here and there on his way. Bad news came home in the fall of 28 or 29, just before the Depression. Dad was making the last payment on the half quarter we lived on. They bought this quarter from Jim Bolton on the same title, so when Dad wanted his land, he couldn't get it. He bought it with Mike Pomohychuk, Bad news came when he found out that Mike Pomohychuk wasn't mailing any payments, so with the accumulated interest, he still owed more than they paid for the quarter. Dad had his building made up of clay and logs, while Pomohychuk had his building on skids. Even his house, though they were like the greenery of now, they were still dwellings. When he found out that Dad was leaving the land by morning, he had his buildings pulled onto the allowance where the road goes to the Ducks Unlimited, and this Rossburn Road. After all that grief, Dad rented some land at Oakburn. I think it was the spring of 1925, where Dick Droll lives now. They had huge buildings on the place, a huge barn, a large house from what we moved from. Everything looked so huge. We went to Oakburn School, from there only a mile and a half from there. So instead of riding horseback on an old horse like we did to Kello School, If Lou or I happened to fall off Minnie the mare, we would have to go to the fence post for us to climb up again. We walked. The changes were big. All was well for a couple of years, in spite of Dad losing a few horses. We had fun with the kids coming over to the house to play. There with Garth Husted and another guy who used to come over with their dogs and sleds. Got me interested in it. So I started to train our dogs, even though they were smaller than the German Shepherds that these guys drove. They were pretty good. The last third year disaster struck again about the middle of July. A massive wind and heat wave burnt all the crops. Everything ripped up in a day. No grains to feed the pigs. Pigs that most people kept were worthless. No one wanted to keep them, so many of the smaller ones were just killed off, and the bigger ones were butchered and sold for what one could get for them. One or two dollars. Complete desperation hit. 
So that spring, 1933, another move, this time to Glen Elmo, next to the Crown Land and the Riding Mountain Park. By this time, Dad had raised a few more cattle. I'm not sure, but I think we were milking about 12 cows, which at that time was quite a herd of milk cows. They were short horns, good for milk and beef. So one day, with some neighbors in loaded racks and grain boxes, the move was on. First stop with the cattle herd on hoof was the stop at Rossburn at Uncle Joe Juice's farm. He was renting one mile west of town. Next morning, after the cattle were fed and watered, we started the long trip north to Glen Elmo, about 10 miles. It was still a pretty good sleigh road. At about sundown, we finally hit our destination in a wild hilly country, just a half mile from the Riding Mountain Park, back to a little clay house again, and a small stable with a hole under the floor to store potatoes, carrots, and garden stuff when spring opened up. The dogs dug holes to the basement from the fear of bears that came from the park. There was a lot of pasture for the cattle on the quarter, so spring started up not bad for us kids. It was only a mile or so to walk to school. About 10 kids walked that road, so we had lots of friends. Cooches, Durloro, Coralix. It wasn't bad, even though the parents were very depressed. Dad sure had a bad luck streak following him. On July 2nd, a massive hailstorm dropped about four inches of white snow, leaving no leaves, grass, even spruce branches broken off and cleaned off their pines. That was it for Glen Omo, and another move in store coming up, this time back to Birdtail in 33 or 34. Dan has the land now. We stayed there for a few years and went to Brown School. This was about three miles from the Veach's places where we lived at the time. Then Dad bought the place that Uncle Mike owns now at Birdtail School, just to the west. The school is right at the corner of the farm, so we were moved during the summer to the new home again. In closing, thanks, Dad, for sharing the memories and the gift you have given us with photos. Peace be with you and Mum. Merry Christmas to all the family, and God bless.